This episode of Boss Rush After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our family of podcasts, head over to patreon.com slash boss rush media or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for the Boss Rush Network. It's your man, LeBron Dawkins here, and I'm back with the one and the only, Stephanie Klimov. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Boss man himself is here, too, Corey Derrick. What is popping? Wow. Look at you. Look at you. Gotta be smooth, right? I can't. Look at me. I'm pasty. Pop the cup. (laughs) I'm pasty. I'm pasty. I'm overweight and I'm sitting in the dark so you don't see either one. Okay. And what do we have here? Two weeks in a row, Mr. Jesse Douglas? What what is going on? He's just blessing us with his presence. Yeah, you know, I wanna I wanna come back in this uh full force, so See, Corey, Jesse, look, look, did you did you hear that? Look how look how he put the smooth in the voice. I know. Now. Look, <laughs> what look, Jesse, Jesse's got that slow kind of demeanor, like an easygoing and northern midwesterner, right? Like that's his demeanor, like the, and it's relaxing. He's like the white, okay, he's like the white berry white. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make him very black? Very <laughs> black. <laughs> Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the show, everybody. How, how's it going tonight? Pretty good. It's, uh, yeah. it's going. Half the week's over. Yeah, half. The, yeah, half the week definitely is over. And you know what? And half the fucking month is over. What is going on? Yeah, yeah. happy January. Mid- what the? What the literal hell? You know. Actually, I heard this. I heard this thing because you know, like when we're kids, we cannot wait to get older, or we can't wait for this to happen, or whatever, and stuff like that. Yeah. Apparently, our memory filter is so is so uncluttered with shit that you know, like it takes forever for us to, to realize the passage of time. And now that we're at a certain age, now it's like it's like man, like I remember waking up this morning. Like, why am I ready to go to bed again? <laughs> that's that's funny you bring that up, Laron, because that actually ties into my topic for this week. Because I actually oh. brought a topic. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Then I will, then I will say no more because I, I we we all want to be in, in shock and awe that you have a topic. <laughs> I do. So, <laughs> yeah. So are we are we just going to jump into it? Uh, let's jump. Let's jump right in. All right. All right. So, I was thinking. So this week, I know this isn't usually a video game show, and it's not going to be really about video games. It's going to be about entertainment in general, but. This week, um, at the time of this recording, Persona 3 and Persona 4 are coming to Game Pass and uh, Nintendo Switch and a bunch of other consoles. Anything you can play games on, it's coming there, right? And I've also notice been how, like... Notice how he forgot like the one important game that comes out this week. Notice how he forgot that. Uh, what, Fire Emblem? X is already... X is already yeah, that! <laughs> Fire Emblem? No, yeah, but, but that doesn't have to, anything to do with my topic. Okay, okay, okay. Well, this game doesn't. The last one kind of does. But anyways, my point. Why is it in entertainment, in TV shows, in video games, in movies, as we get older, we're so entranced with the topic of going back to high school or going, you know, watching relationships in school form playing out those like in persona you literally play a high school student and form relationships with other high school students like Mm. forming bonds like why is that i don't want to do that (laughs) (laughs) no but i I mean look i don't want to i don't want to go back to high school either high school was awful but like why is it when we're presented with a piece of entertainment that does that it's so intriguing to a lot of people because that's when everyone's full of hormones and they do crazy stupid shit hmm I don't know. Yeah, because then whenever they try to do college, it always ends up failing. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I just I I had that thought recently because like some some of my I know I'm going to get made fun of this, but I don't care. Some of my favorite shows like on TV over the past, I guess, 20 years, like have been about, you know, high school or kids like not kids but you know like that era right like smallville 
Vampire mm-hmm. Diaries, uh, you know, shows like that that are like, oh, these are about building relationships as high school students or just out of ice, just out of high school, right? Gossip mm-hmm. Girl's another one that I really like a lot. Like, a why? Wait, you, you like Gossip Girl, but you give me crap about liking 90 Day Fiance? Mm-hmm. I love Gossip Girl. Wow. Oh, man. Chuck Bass. Used to be my hero. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. I've learned since then. Please don't cancel me. Um, <laughs> if you knew who Chuck Bass was, you'd be like, you would have muted me. But it's fine. Nope, no idea. Um, <laughs> no, I, it, it's just like an intriguing thing. that, Like, I don't know. As we get older, do we look back and like, is it a way to make up for what we didn't have when we were that young? Or if we did have it, is it a way to like redo those times, like make up for those times? I do think that's a factor, like all joking aside, because when we're in high school, that is during our teen years. And just psychologically speaking, we're at a point where we want to start making our own decisions. We start questioning what we've been growing up with. But um, most of the time, not all the time, you know, we have rules and guidelines we need to abide by via school and parents and a lot of things were out of our control, despite the fact that we are now wishing we'd be in control more. So maybe a lot of people find it a cathartic experience mm-hmm. to watch or play through things, if, especially if it's a video game, something they can control during a time where they did not have any control. I can absolutely see that as a draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we're, you know, like you, you joked about like hormones and stuff, but But it's also like one of the, like, everything is stressful, everything is over exaggerated. And so like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that really did not get to enjoy that time. But then Mm -hmm. to be able to go back and, and, you know, watch, get to see it through the eye of someone who maybe did get to enjoy those, those years, you know, the TV shows, you know, like, like yeah, like one of my favorite shows was Veronica Mars, and that that takes place during high school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Saved by the Bell and stuff that yeah. that takes place. You know, during high school. Well, shit, Boy Meets World yeah, was one of the shows. I was still I what loved. I was still in high school when Saved by the Bell was on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and well, this one's a video game one. I technically haven't played it yet, but I listened to a podcast on it, and I'm I want to play it. Um, but since it's a, a small, short game, there's no rush to it. But anyone heard of Emily is Away? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Emily is Away? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's a basic game. It's literally like you playing as if you're in old school AOL. Mm-hmm. I am chat. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a sequel to that now, too. Yeah. Emily is Away 2 or something. Um, and I am making it a point to play it at some point because... I grew, I was a teenager in, in like junior high, high school when AOL IM was available. And I'm like, I really want to revisit that and see like how I would want to answer things. I think so. But that's clearly the draw for me there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because before texting, you had your, you had to pop that up on your computer. So you yeah. Can, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I spent years like my, my first girlfriend was a long distance relationship. She lived all the way in New Jersey. So like I was constantly on the computer, you know, I mean, and I think that was, I was going to say, that's another thing too. I think that's when like our, you know, a lot of people's uh, first like real relationships, you know, kind of started like their first, like bigger, you know, and not the just like, Oh, I like you. And, you know, hanging out it's like i don't just like you i like (laughs) like you (laughs) well to piggyback off of that further i think to to provide another similar but different reason many people's kind of many people peaked in high school or one of their peaks i guess and it was a a good time so they might want to watch shows or play games because of nostalgia and we all know how extremely powerful nostalgia is like oh back in my heyday blotty blotty blahs like nostalgia would be an easy pull uh for people to kind of watch or play games and shows that are during a time of their life where they were at their peak, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alcohol, what? drugs, you know, <laughs> parties. 
uh, what I was thinking about too, Stephanie, on that note, was actually the opposite of like. I mean, when I was in when I was in high school, like I played sports and I did a lot of things like that. But I was also it did a lot of art classes, and I was in a lot mm-hmm. of art classes. And you know, once I got to college and was playing was playing football in college and decided like it took a lot in me to like really leave that situation because like you know you're in a situation where you don't want to let your parents down you don't want to let you know people that you know down but like i i hated it so much that i actually like forced myself to fail out of college the first time around because of how bad the situation was and how I just didn't want to be there or, you know, play football anymore, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I wonder for me if it's just like, if I could go back and do things differently, would I, you know, or would I have made different decisions? And I was, I was thinking about that a lot because, uh, the new Harry Potter game trailer came out today and not, not that I went to some cool wizarding school, right? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. uh, unless you traded made, in it would have made you, it would have made you like 50 times more cooler if you did though. Yeah. I know. No, I went to a school where everybody drove a truck that was three sizes too big and uh, old and everybody overcompensated. You know. oh. Yeah. Um, there was a llama farm down the street from my high school. It was, you know, one of those. Yo, that's, that sounds cool. Um, Did people drive tractors to to school? Yeah, we had a we had a what was it? Called? Oh, we called it Tour de Hartville, and everybody oh, instead of driving their cars to school drove their tractors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Corey is white, white. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and some. I remember somebody got in trouble for um, <laughs> their uh, parents ran the hardware store, so they took a bunch of toilets from the hardware store. And put them in wagons and made a train, like a like a tractor train, out of toilets and wagons, <laughs> um, and drove to school like that, and kind of got in trouble. <laughs> you got in trouble, dude. No, I didn't get in trouble. No. Oh, they um, got in trouble. Oh. They got in trouble. Um, but, anyways, back, yeah, I was just, I was, I just like sometimes, I think of decisions from then and wish maybe not that I would have changed anything really because like I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't make those decisions but like there's definitely things that I'm like man do I do I should I have really done this should I have like taken this class instead of this class should I have like tried a little harder here or not as hard here or you know what I mean Mm-hmm. And I think everyone has that regret because there's there's some things that I think about that you know I should have done differently in school and I haven't in school but just you know differently than right when I got out of school. Yeah. And so like I I just I I wonder if like watching shows or playing these games kind of remedies some of those thoughts, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so well, it's, oh. you know, it's kind of like role playing. I'm not even trying to like put in any innuendo or anything, but it's true. I think that's why I use the word cathartic. If you can kind of role play out scenarios that w- could have been, it could kind of give your mind that closure kind of. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I mean, for me, I think the big decision would have like I would have rather stayed home and gone to college or gone to a college and not played sports. I think that that was like the major decision that I made that should have been changed. But also, like you, I I just kind of look back there and I'm just like, man, I didn't really have any friends. You know, like none of the sports people liked me because I was an art kid and none of the art kids liked me because I was an athlete and I was like stuck in the middle though. I, I mean, I had friends like I talked to me. You know, it's not like I was like, you know, sitting by myself or anything, but it was just kind of like, I never really 
fit. Well, yeah, you didn't fit perfectly into one of the clicks, which yeah. I hated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I was kind of the same way too, but like, like I was, I was fortunate where like I got along with all the clicks. Like I, like there wasn't a specific one I fit into, but like I, I got along with the stoner kids. I got along with the, you know, some of the jocks. I got along with the, you know, the nerdy kids. I got along with the popular kids. Some of the popular, you know, like I just, I, I didn't really. Like either they just seemed like a decent person and I would talk to them or I, or I didn't, you know, like I, I never, yeah, never really fit, fit into anything either, but yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm prepping myself because like, you know, those games come out this week and I really want to play Persona 4 Golden. Um, And I'm wondering, I maybe we'll revisit this topic after I play some of that game or whatever, but like, I, I was just wondering if like my own life decisions have ever made any decision for me in a game or something oh. that I've never noticed. Yeah. I definitely would love to follow up with that. See, like I unfortunately don't really have that drive and, or I don't think I'll get as much back from it because I have a, when I say unusual, I don't, I, I don't know if it's the right word, but I went to an all girl private catholic school i don't think Ooh. there are, is a lot of media or games that you can role play through that so like maybe that's why i don't have a draw to these things because that experience that i'd be playing through is like it wasn't part of my world i don't know what it's like to go that's to a co-ed school <laughs> yeah hmm. yeah i could see yeah i could see where that would yeah would and if, be, if someone mm -hmm. made an all-girl catholic school game i don't think it would be the kind of game that I'm thinking about. Yeah, it seems like that would be in the Steam adult section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, dude? Really? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> By just quick side tangent about Steam adult section because I was just clicking around like an idiot. <laughs> uh oh. And there's one, I forget what it's called, but you are an ogre and you are giving massages. <laughs> I wonder if ogres give really good massages. And that includes happy endings, just so you know. Never mind. No, no, I no. I but they get want. a firm grip. Do not in want. There. And they're massive dongs. No, no, Lots no, of pains. no, no. Now I know for sure that's going to be in my damn dreams tonight. Oh my god! <laughs> Why? Why? Well, if you're going to be dreaming about it, it is green. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but that just reminded me of there's a Michael J. Uh, stand up special on Netflix, uh, and he talks about like a home, like a homeless man with a giant penis for like ten minutes of his comedy what? special. He's like, "What if, what if that's the reason this guy's homeless? You know, is because he he had too much confidence growing up because he had a huge dick." <laughs> and and all of his friends were like, "Dude, you got to try hard at something because that that you know you have too that's much not going to sustain you. That's yeah. not going to sustain you. Yeah, and that's the reason why he's homeless because he had too much confidence and didn't try hard at anything. So he just is homeless with a big dick. I don't know. Was, <laughs> I don't know why that reminded me of that, but it did. It, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Great special, by the way. Highly recommend it. I think it's from like 2015 or 16 or something. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash bossrushmedia and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. Good times. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> well, that was my topic. Well, thank you for bringing that, Corey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll probably be thinking about my high school days tonight now that you mentioned it. You're welcome. Who else got a topic? I thought that was going to go longer than like 15 That's minutes. All right. but... Well, while we're kind of thinking about a second topic, I will kind of in interject in between just because you happen to talk about comedy. Nick Offerman is coming to Massachusetts in March. Oh, really? I'm like, nice. I want to see him. 
that his name? Nick Offerman. Yeah, yeah. Nick Offerman. Yeah. Aren't you going to yeah. see him in like three weeks on The Last of Us show? Well, yeah, that's why I think it's pretty amazing. Like, oh my gosh, you're on the show that I'm watching right now. Yeah, he plays. Who's he plays? Bill, right? Bill, yeah. Yeah, he's I playing am Bill. Really looking forward to seeing his performance as Bill. I don't know why, and I, that's where I am right now in the game, playing and like right at the school where you're with Bill, and I'm like, I can't wait. Yeah, I heard they changed a lot about that show. Not to like get into spoilers, and I know that. Laron, wait, the you Last have, of Us? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I don't know what changed, you think. No, they haven't changed a lot, actually. No, uh, there, mean, there definitely are differences, but none that, like, greatly deviates from the game. Like, yeah. nothing significant. Oh, I heard there I, I, I heard there was, What's like, one thing you've heard? What's one thing yeah. we've heard? Stephanie and I can both confirm. Plane crash in the intro. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, is that really a big deal? Okay, a plane crash. Well, um, the virus isn't an airborne virus. Okay, That seems now, like a pretty major now, change. Now let me, well let me ask let, well let me ask you a question, um, because uh, because fungus can get into your body in, you know any particular way. I know, it but can. Like, I know, but the, the the game positions the virus from right. But Lauren, didn't you mention part of it had to do with like graphics production. and like the yeah, production, production issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, in all honesty, like, what were they gonna do? They could either CG it in, and then they would have to do this, do this like wizardry oh. with like how, like how they have the the actual cast on camera, and mm-hmm. you know, or, or vice versa. They could do a practical effect, and they would still have a problem because, like, then you look, then you got a problem with lighting and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, also, also the other thing I thought about when I heard that was like, well, we did just go through a pandemic with an airborne virus that, you know. <laughs> I think that, that was. Bad, I think but... that was. I think that was the major. But I think that was the major. I think that was one of the, also the major reasons why they did make that change. It was. Mm-hmm. It was. It was hit a little too close to home, you know. Yeah. And you know, like we and we, you know, like we're living in. A, we're living in a, nation, in a nation now where like two thirds of the population gets triggered, you know, like a, a, about taking precautions about not getting sick. Mm-hmm. Why do I feel like you're peering into my soul? You just um, well, well, I mean, not going to I mean, the doctor because I'm sick. I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I was definitely bitching at you earlier tonight about that. I <laughs> was, but that, but it's because I care about you, dude. Like, trust me, if I did not care, I wouldn't have said shit. I'd just been like, get, get better, <laughs> get better, be better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, be better, Corey. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Don't be. Or, 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 or be, or be best, like some other people say. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, I guess if you want to call them like changes, they are. But I guess I more so mean like if you are playing through the game, like it's following the main beats and like mm-hmm. there's some honestly, lines. I, plus, like honestly, what I like about it, like people people are mentioning like oh crap, people are mentioning like the the whole thing about um about the uh, about the plane about the planes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what's kind of what's kind of interesting about that is like you know like that's exactly. Like, like when planes have like issues, like they're supposed to try and find a place to land. Even that means they have to land on a damn city street. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine, I, I guess this isn't meant to be the topic, but I, I just want to elaborate further on this. Can you imagine being on an airplane and like someone it's, is literally yeah. trying to bite everyone's head off? Like, what do you do? Right? You're on the, this tiny little capsule, like 300, not 300,000 feet. Sorry. Well, whatever thousand feet in the air you are. Super high up. Wicked high. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I've I've actually thought about watching the last of a show. I'm. I listened to a spoiler cast for the first episode. Was it ours? Yes, no. Damn uh, it! I said yesterday. <sighs> yeah, our, yeah, ours didn't and, get up until. I know, I'm until just day because joking. And uh, I like it. Sounds intriguing, but like, I just I. I would feel like I would feel like I a, a poser if I watched the show and didn't play the game first. And okay. like you know, one of no, my no, goals, no, 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 no. no one there of my goals this... this year, one of my goals this year is to actually play through at least the first game. You don't have to. Don't force yeah, yourself you don't through have things. To. I know, but no, it's, honestly, it's a hurdle it's... that I, I like mentally. Like I've told you guys stuff off air about certain things that I don't really feel comfortable talking about on this show, although I've talked about a lot. I get it, mm. but you know that like I I just when, when there's injury or worse to children, mm. it just really like 
it it's like one of the few things that like really bothers me. It takes a lot to bother me, you know, like seriously bother me. But like, it's Stephanie, a trigger should I, for people. Stephanie, Stephanie, should I tell him? Should I tell him? What you you've played and beat the game? No, you have not, Stephanie. Shit. I so, yes, I beat the yeah. game. Oh, you beat the game? I okay, mean, I so know, I know so, I know the entire story of The Last of Us and Part Two. So I'm not okay. Like, so I was about to, uh, okay. So you do know about the part where she almost gets raped, you know, while she's yeah. trying to get supplies for for Joel, who's yeah. still like laid up with, with a yeah. serious injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. So I mean, I'm not like it, it, it's just like I told myself this year that I'm I'm going to a take care of myself more. But you're not doing a good job so far. I, know, I was about to terrible. say how how's that how's that going for you, champ? It's uh, well, di- like I'm eating, an asshole. I'm eating, sorry. Eating wise, it's actually going pretty good. I've actually lost mm-hmm. some weight this year. I'm actually yeah, that's good. I, that's 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 great. Also, good. this this weekend I used as like a reset for like caffeine and energy drinks type stuff. What? Uh-huh. Yeah. So from Friday to Monday, because I was off on Monday, I only had two energy drinks. And one of them was during pow block. And the other one was Monday. And then yesterday. I only had two. (laughs) And today I've only had one, which was during the recording of Boss Rush podcast. And I usually drink like three or four ish because I don't sleep. Also, on nights that I haven't recorded in the last week and a half, I've been in bed before 11 nice. that is also super early for me so well listen i made someone who never played the game who doesn't even play video games i made them watch the last of us with me like i, I just said this is what we're doing mm. yeah <laughs> and even he said you know what i don't even like zo- zombie shows because that's mm-hmm. how he interprets it it's a zombie show he's like i don't even like the zombie uh, zombie shows and i actually liked it yeah, he said it's a little slow for him, but that that if for someone that hasn't played the game and doesn't know what's go ahead, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe the ninety minutes like yeah, you know, setting things up, but yeah, even but a you, no- you got to set things up for people who haven't played the game. Well, exactly. So he understands that. He goes, "I'm gonna assume that it it's gonna pick up." I'm like, "Oh yeah, it is." So yeah. just know that someone who's never played the game, doesn't play video games, enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait. He thought the premiere was slow. Not like super slow i mean just like i was hoping to see more action because you have the action packed scene of when outbreak first happens and then you need to listen to our commentary about the whole thing (laughs) going through the going through the town in the truck you need to hear our commentary on that one (laughs) no that part was very exciting but you gotta admit like looking from outside perspective everything that happened in the quarantine zone for the episode like wasn't necessarily super action packed Mm -hmm. you know whatever I was fine with it that action non action pack doesn't equal boring because mm-hmm. he wasn't yeah. saying that either. He's just saying like from an action standpoint there wasn't as much, but he understands that okay you're setting things up. The episode ends like when they're about to go to a very dangerous place. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't saying that as like a, a negative, but uh, well, I, I converted another person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did so. I did buy The Last of Us Part 1, the PS5 version, over break. Mm -hmm. It was on sale. And I also bought The Last of Us Part 2. It was only $10 on sale. $10? Dang. So I have them both. Um, So that's like one of the big hurdles this year that I'm going to try to do. The the other hurdle is like, you know, obviously I want to play more games and do more with this subsection of podcasts that we're doing, right? Like after dark and boss presents it. And obviously the main podcast, but like, I also want to play games that like, I've always said, like I have no interest in, or I don't want to play this because of a B or C. Right. So mm-hmm. the last of us is on that list. Bioshock is on that list. What's the other game on that list. There's another game on that list. Well, this could be a good time to do a quick check in on kind of what our goals are, because I have a follow up question to that, Corey, is I have a hard time forcing myself through a game I'm not interested in. It's, it's, even if it's like a like highly critically acclaimed 
blockbuster triple A title. Yeah, I'm having, that, I'm having that problem with God of War right now. And a lot of people say, you know, t- time is short, especially if you're an adult with kids. Um, you know, why force yourself to play through an experience that's not pleasurable for you? So, like, why is that a goal? Like, if you're not enjoying it, why are you making yourself play it? Well, I think I think there, for the most part, I wouldn't do that. But also, as an enthusiast of this hobby, mm. there are there are industry defining titles that I feel like people should play right whether you're into it or not and i feel like the last of us and bioshock in particular are two of those titles that have been positioned as those games mm-hmm. and i'm maybe maybe saying i'm tired of not being in that co- like talking saying in that conversation like i've never played it or i haven't finished it or whatever maybe that's not the right term but like as an enthusiast and as somebody who like really thinks a lot of what we're doing and Mm. how we're doing things here and things like that, I feel like, I feel like as a, this is going to sound stupid, but as a student of this hobby, those are things that I need to do for educational purposes, for historical purposes. Right. And so, you know, and and there's a lot of classic games that I never played that I'm going to do that this year too. the plan, right? Like A Link to the Past is a game that I've never played, right? It's one of the greatest Zelda games of all time. Never played it. Um, I've seen a lot of people play it. You know, Ed and I did a thing on it like a few years ago, right? But I've personally never played it. And with my recent playthrough of uh Link's Awakening I have a new appreciation of top-down Zeldas and so you know maybe I'll have a different perspective when I go back to play it hey that's fair enough man like I tried just doing something similar where I I bought Bioshock like the the whatever Mm -hmm. and while it's not my genre I'm like well everyone talks about Bioshock you know it's one of those like you said industry defining things I didn't make it very far I tried yeah because I really want to be able to understand what people are talking about yeah I mean some of these games I think are still time and place too right like I think Bioshock is one of those games that's like a time and place where like the storytelling in that game was so important at the time, but games have done it better since then. Right. Even games that people that don't hold in high regard, but you look at the last of us also, right. Where people still hold that game, you know, what 10, 10, 11 years later, still as like the pinnacle of video game storytelling. And even the second one, you know, I know a lot of people think the second one is better than the first one. And like, I don't know. I just, I feel like, man, if, if I'm going to like be this person who is really into this stuff, like, you know, we were, we were talking about the the show at work yesterday during our, uh, we have this thing called a non-project call where it's like a catch up call with everybody to say, Hey, how was your weekend? What'd you guys do? Blah, blah, blah. It's just Mm -hmm. like a, I don't want to say a BS meeting, but it's like a, you know, how was your weekend type meeting and making everybody feel like they are included in, in the meeting and stuff. And people were talking about the last of a show. And I'm like, none of like half of you don't even play games. And like some <laughs> of them, did, some of them didn't even know it was based on a video game. Uh-huh. And they were, and they were asked me if I was watching it. I was like, I, I don't that know if I'm going the, to or not. And they're like, but that is the power of Hollywood though. Yeah. Yeah. And and some of the people were like, well, don't you play video games? I was like, yeah, but I didn't play that one. I'm not like really into the whole zombie thing. I didn't really feel like getting all into it. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, the fact that this show is reaching so many people, uh, mm-hmm. even outside well, of it had what the second biggest premiere outside of the Game of uh, Thrones House spinoff. House of Dragon and yep. uh, and uh, and what was the other show? Uh, the, the Steve Jimmy show on, on HBO. Oh, Boardwalk yeah. Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Boardwalk Empire um, is a good show. Well, this is a testament. You know, this is something that we that we as gamers take for granted. Take for granted. You know, like um, like 
they when they when they make these adaptations and stuff like that, they're not always making it with us gamers in mind. Uh-huh. So like the magic about the Last of Us the series right now is the fact that they're staying so true to the to the to the element of what the original source is that is amazing. Like like Stephanie Dan and I talked about you know when we recorded on Monday night how like how like we're sitting there we're 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 sitting there we're trying to discern where like the original content begins and where the game itself is continuing and stuff like that because like they weave it so well and you know like i think i think it's actually an enhancement because like without giving any spoilers away like what you see in the very beginning of the show that is something completely new completely different and it also mm-hmm. sets up a tone and it's, and it's and it's kind of insidious the way they do it because it also it also puts a major message out there to just humanity overall and stuff like mm-hmm. that it, yeah. it's 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 amazing and you know like it's just if 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 the next eight episodes are going to be anything that's premiere, like it is going to be one of the best shows. It's probably going to win so many awards. It's probably it's probably going to sweep the um. Uh, it's going to it's probably going to sweep the um the 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 Emmys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably going to sweep like you know Critics Choice. Um, it's probably going to sweep like a, a lot of this stuff, you know, and it's going and it's definitely going to propel like adaptations, whether it's video game adaptation, cartoon adaptation, comic book adaptations book adaptations um you know it's probably going to propel the, it's probably going to propel a different way that you know like ed you know from power block will finally stop bitching about like the Ua balls and all the other hack ass directors out there that you know like make take beloved video game properties and turn them to shit do the next person this isn't aimed at ed in particular it's more aimed at general but like the next person that says Mortal Kombat is the best video game movie ever, I'm just gonna like. Story, Story and Andre tried to fight me last night. I, I and I and I told them I was like, you know, Mortal Kombat is good for what it is because it's the first, it's the first adaptation for a video game that actually felt worth a damn. But it still, it still had its problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, again, speaking of things that define industries, like I, as far as video game adaptations. The Last of Us, I think, is the first truly like near perfect way of incorporating the old and the new. And I'm hoping this will set precedent for improved quality moving forward. I know kind of maybe the Marvel movies did it for the comic to movie adaptations, possibly. So it's not like this hasn't been done before, but I just think The, the Last of Us ha- has really made a, a huge impact. Now, what's what's magical about the MCU is that, you know, like they they took they took this fantastical source that's comic books and they started making putting injecting realism into it because like I because like I because like, man, OK, like if we look at the three Spider-Man movies, they took every they took all those whack ass villains that Peter Parker's ever had to fight and they made them realistic. You know, Mysterio, a, a dude in the comic books who's just like an illusionist with a dome on his head, you know, like shit like jake gyllenhaal's portrayal of mysterio and just that whole like the way they wrote him out i mean amazing the vulture the vulture cool yeah was. <laughs> right yeah like i mean you, you know so like they, they they took it and they and they made it make sense because yes what as someone who reads comic books you know like i i get into the genre and stuff like that i i, I enjoy spider-man comic books but there's always been a part of me that's like make it make sense yeah, well, yeah that's, that's a big reason why like the average person can get into these movies because i'm telling you if the movies made the villains for example exactly how they appear in the comic book eh, would it be as oh popular? like saber yeah. like saber tooth in the first x-men movie <laughs> yeah oh my gosh dude he was so that makeup and stuff was so awesomely bad i yeah i'm an, I'm an x-men movie defender i love those movies i realize they're bad but god i love those movies you're part of the problem. I know I am. I, no, seriously, <laughs> I, I like bad movies. Okay, I, you know, but I now can understand um, when you know the first a- adaptations of the kind were the book to movies or book to show. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't much of a reader, uh, which is kind of weird because I write, and they're like, "Oh, you're an author. You must read a lot." I mm-hmm. read garbage. I read nothing. <laughs> like I just, I don't read. I read garbage. I just, I, I don't know. I should not, I, I should be reading more than I do, which is minimum. But I always hear people bitching and complaining when they see movies and they, nah, nothing like the book or they ruined it or whatever. And I'm like, Psh, what you talking? But now I get it when, you know, when I see video games 
get butchered well, in shows or movies. Well, it's wild uh, because like because like now we're actually starting to get stuff that actually feels more true to like gaming content and gaming content. I feel like is the shit that's always been bastardized in movies and television. Yeah, yeah, yeah like I I still. T- I mean, it it was what it was, but those those Resident Evil movies, I just I couldn't get. Into I, I, I do not do 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 not <laughs> talk bad about those movies. Not I, not a single one. I just I, I I'm not talking bad about. I just I just personally <laughs> I couldn't get into them. Like they, I just you know, like for me, it just was too too far off of the path for me. I was gonna say I didn't ever was, see them, but it, were the or the Mila was it. Jo- Mila Jovovic. M- Mila Jovovic. Are those Resident Evil? I heard those movies were nothing like the games, though. They, 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 they okay. So, well, but... yeah, they took they took elements of of like the Resident Evil series, but uh, it's kind of a weird thing about the Resident Evil movies because like the Resident Evil movies, like you know, like the original the, the original movie was set out to be like something that that could happen in a Resident Evil universe. Yeah. And so people went there, watched it, and they're a little upset because they want to get something more like the Resident Evil games. So the, so the, so the second movie, Resident Evil Apocalypse, comes out, and it, it, it incorporated more of Resident Evil 2 and 3 the into it. Big, and people awful, were mad. rubber-suited nemesis. Yeah, and, and, oh my and gosh, people, that was and people awesome. were mad. And people were mad, you know. And it's, it's just, it's, it, it, so, yeah, so... Uh, so Basically, you know, Paul W. S. Anderson decided to take it. You know, like uh, I feel he he probably felt like his original idea was you know have it stand have it stand alone beside the 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 the, the content. You know, and he just ran with it that way. You know, so like the movies took a life of their own, and that was and that was good in some regards and stuff like that. But you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't faithful because like yeah. you know your main characters weren't even characters that were ever conceived in the original games. Mm-hmm. Until until Jill Valentine got introduced, you know, Jill Valentine got introduced, and later you saw Ada Wong. Then later you saw Leon, and never saw Chris Redfield, which I'm kind of which I'm kind of pissed. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, we did see Chris Red, Chris and Claire. We did see them. Yeah, my bad. Question: um, Which Resident Evil game would you like to see have a TV series or movie? And when I say that, because we have a bunch of Resident Evil stuff, I mean ones that actually stick to that the 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 story of that game. One through eight. Everyone, so. everyone's gonna say it's either gonna be a toss up between Resident Evil Four or Resident Evil Two. Everyone's gonna say that. Oh. Everyone is gonna actually say that. first one. Yeah, I guess... actually, I was gonna say the first one because I would like to see it doing done in like a found footage kind of way, Ooh. where you're actually in body the, cams. You're in the yeah. You're in the uh, well. They kind of the tried that one. <clears throat> they they kind of tried that. Welcome to Raccoon City and. That shit still didn't work out. Well, you gotta you gotta make it good and appealing. You... Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Raccoon City was bad, and that was the game, and that was the and that was the movie that you know that you know like all the Resident Evil fans like, yes, we're gonna get rid of that shit Resident Evil one through six, and they're like, oh man, one through six wasn't that bad. You know, you know what series <laughs> well, I actually think would make a really good movie would be Dead Space. <laughs> Yes, Hell I was just yes. gonna bring that up. Dead space. Hell yeah. And I saw how yeah. I saw how Ed was trash talking it in the in the chat a few nights ago. Because he was like he was like they already had animated movies. What you know, like why do they need to make a movie out of that? No, no, no. Ed no. Ed Ed still refuses to subscribe to Netflix and he buys all of his games and movies like three or four times. I love you, Ed. You know I do. I know you're listening. <laughs> you're gonna have to cave one of these days. Okay. I think um I don't know why, because I'm terrified of this one, but I think Resident Evil Seven would be great. Yeah. Seven would be Seven would be good, you know. Probably a movie, yeah. not a series. But yeah. honestly, you know, if they want to take a really safe approach, if they want to take a really safe approach, you know, with one of these Resident Evil and like adapt it to like a TV show or to a movie, do it Code Veronica, since they're so fucking afraid to like remake it anyway. Oh, God, Code Veronica, that's the game that needs remade the most. Exactly. That game's weird, man. Game's weird. I would. I, I, I still feel like I still feel like Code Veronica Ver- is coming out. So <laughs> I still feel like Code Veronica had the best had the best main villain before, like you know, Lady D showed up because <laughs> Alexia Ashford was a fucking beast. <laughs> Man, you know what movie was good though? The Uncharted movie it was good. <laughs> It was good, but it was good, but they they played so fast and loose with the content, you know. Yes. Like the movie, the movie was good. The movie was good, but goddamn, it was like, did Make y'all even see- try? 
They're making huh? a sequel. Are they making a sequel? Yeah. Or, or really? Are, wait, yeah. are they making a sequel? Yeah. Or are we just letting? Or are we just letting that end credit scene, like you know? No, they're making of, a sequel. Okay, it made, so. it made seven hundred million worldwide, which is good for a Sony movie. Wow, that's not all called right. Spider Man. So, I'm all about movies being successful. I wasn't necessarily blown away, but seems like it. Blew I mean, I wasn't blown feels, away, it but the best I wasn't movie blown ever away, made. but I was impressed. I I'm also a sucker for like Indiana Jones style movies. So, <laughs> as much as much as I love the Uncharted franchise, like it it. It didn't piss me off. As yeah. a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it didn't piss me off any more than the Resident Evil movies pissed me off. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I've now I have seen some game adaptations that piss me off, like Alone in the Dark, mm. Mm. House of the Dead, ooh, mm. <laughs> ooh. <Super> Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I I really liked the newer Tomb Raider movies. With Alicia Vikander, yeah, yeah, those are yeah, good. Those were really I, good. I, I you know like I'm probably gonna draw the ire of the internet like I never was a was a fan of the Angelina Jolie movies. No, I wasn't either. I don't even remember. I just knew there was like they, a the British tech guy that kind of looked like a poor man Seth Green, <laughs> and like the butler was like a uh, I don't know weird. The butler was weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of like a reverse role, like a well, I don't know if it's a reverse role, but are we? When are we going to hear about the Indiana Jones game? Game, mm-hmm. probably E three. Fingers crossed. I was man, th- I was thinking too uh, while we were doing the other show, like when you mentioned Perfect Dark. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't wait to hear more about that. Wasn't Perfect? Wasn't wait? Wasn't Perfect Dark getting an adaptation too? Like a like a TV or a movie adaptation at oh one my point? Gosh. Probably. Also, speaking of speaking of Xbox games, Quantum Break was trending on Twitter the other day, and everybody was like, "Quantum Break Two is it coming out?" Whoop. I would love for a Quantum Break sequel. Look, yeah, Quantum. If you like Control, play Quantum Break. It's basically yeah. like the prequel to Control. Control is yeah, exactly. I was just about to say that, and I I need yeah. to play Control. I, I actually just Control. re-downloaded Quantum Break because I never finished it. You never finished? Oh my god! Like, I, that was I loved game. what I played. I got through like the first two episodes, I think, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then I just never finished it. So I yeah. did redownload yeah, it. I was, yeah, I was adding to that that uh, like the trend that stuff that was trending because yeah, there the um the dude from the following the show that I used to watch that had Kevin Bacon in it was the main character. The mm-hmm. following, Kevin um, Bacon. Yeah, that he was in the main character in in uh, Quantum Break was in that show, like the the actor, and um, yeah, and there were so many shows during that time. Uh, I liked the Fringe. The the guy from that was in, is in is in Quantum Break, and so yeah, there it was. Like I loved that whole part of it. L- like, Little whole... fingers in Quantum Break. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just I I loved that whole uh like TV show episode things of that that game. Like I know a lot of people didn't appreciate it as much, but it was cool. It was a cool idea. You know what I want to see be a series? The Red the the no, Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead mm. 2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially if they do it like in the vein of like um of like like uh like uh, it was an a eighteen. What was that show? The Yellowstone uh, spinoff. Yeah, thing? Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hmm. I heard that stuff's really good. I I'm I'm wondering if we're poised for a return to stuff like that because it's been so long, like westerns and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My mm-hmm. my son is like oddly into like cowboys and stuff. Like I I mean I know he's only like he's a boy two. <laughs> I had to think about how old he was for a minute. I know he's going to be two in like two months, but like we bought him like we we bought him a, a Woody doll down at Disney at Disney World when we went. And then for mm-hmm. Christmas, we bought him the buzz that and the Jesse that went with it. Oh and like God. he's obsessed. They're like with, they're like they're like his best friends. He's Aww. he's obsessed with the Woody and the Jesse and like he'll play with buzz for like a little bit, but he always goes back to Woody. Because Woody's like, the best. I know Woody's awesome. Actually, he's kind of a dick nah, in the first it's, movie. It's, but, all, um, it's all about Buzz Lightyear. It's no. all about Buzz Lightyear. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Who got their Woody. own spinoff movie? Buzz. Buzz. Exactly. Um, I was like, I was like, is this a trick question? No. 
Um, so yeah, I I think I actually think Red Dead would, especially for like, I don't know. I feel like that show would appeal to some to people who like Breaking Bad or Mad Men or you know like that serious kind of drama, really great acting. You know, Matt, by the way, man, oh man, Mad Men so good. Anybody, anybody a Mad Men fan here? I never I've seen it. <clears throat> I only watched a few episodes of the first season. I never, I don't know, I never really got into it. And I think it's just because back then I didn't have an appreciation for it. I, I feel like I should probably try and get into it now. Oh my gosh, it's it's my favorite show on TV. It, it's it's probably one of my top five favorite shows of all time. And I'm I not, like, a, I'm not I a like person Westworld. that like World. Westworld. You said? Mm. Yeah, I didn't finish it, but I I liked the first season of that. Westworld bored me. Oh my god! Like I tried, and I tried to understand why people were were enjoying it. Mm. Yeah. See, and I'm I, I find myself like I've had a really hard time getting into most of the popular shows that mm-hmm. people have been just like crazy about. Like I did not get into Game of Thrones. I didn't get into Breaking Bad. I didn't get into like any any of those like major ones that were that have just been massive, you know. Yeah. Like I, mm-hmm. I just I, I don't know why they just didn't grab me. But I, I think it I think when it comes to TV shows, I'm more into sci-fi. So yeah, yeah that's like, me too. Like I I, I love I love a good sci-fi show, which is why I love yeah. the fact that we've got five different Star Trek shows on. Like, <laughs> yes, just <laughs> let me have them all. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of sci-fi shows, we need a Destiny show. Where's our Destiny anthology show? <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, they're probably afraid of it because, like, you guys are bitching your your fucking ever loving like like lungs out about Halo. No, it's it's in development. The Destiny show is like the worst kept secret in all of games. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, what it's gonna be? I, know, about, I just want. I, I just want to. I just want to stick it to you guys. They're so. They're always so like butthurt about Halo. I know. I didn't. I haven't watched Halo yet, though. To be fair, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. But when the meme is Master Cheeks, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't know. Jesse, did you watch the Halo show? No, I haven't either. Uh, Damn it! What is wrong with y'all Xbox guys? I don't get it. I, like, I don't have any affinity to Xbox, and I watched Halo. But no. don't. What What is it on? What's what? Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Jesse, did yeah, you see? see? I just don't have it. Did you see? Did you see the gear? They're making a Gears sh- movie. In a show, they yeah, are? I did. Yeah, did you I see? Did. did you see that Dave Batista might play actually play yeah. Marcus Phoenix? Yep. <laughs> yep. Wait, wait, wait. Is this the I'm... same guy that was like that was like he's tired of playing action roles because he's getting too old? No, it's Dave Batista, Batista. said that. That's that's did why he? he's that's why he stepped away from from Guardians of the Galaxy. Wow. Okay. Oh. Well, he's in. Well, yeah, that was... he also like hates working with Disney, but hmm. yeah, he's in the new Guardians. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, no. This is this is his final movie. Yeah, yeah. But like he, like the role he's always wanted to play is Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. To the extent uh-huh. that the Coalition put him in Gears of War as a playable character in the last two yeah. games. Huh. Yeah. And like the role he wants to play the most is Marcus Phoenix. Yeah. So I already have the perfect casting for that. By the way, perfect, <laughs> perfect casting for, for perfect Gears. casting for the show. Yeah. You get okay. You get you get Batista as um, Marcus Phoenix. You get Terry Crews as Cole. I don't know if you could pick anybody else. I really don't know. Go on, go on, go on, go on. I'm I'm trying to think of the actor's name to play uh, uh, Dom. What's he been in? I don't remember. I don't know anything. Um, oh, that's right, because you don't watch movies. I know. And I had one. I had one for Baird too. But I know I I'm on a. Too. I'm I'm on a roll tonight, aren't I, Stephanie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So man, now I feel now I feel foolish, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm dumb. It's cool. Uh, who was I picking as Baird? Or yeah, some. It's got to be somebody super funny. Um, I actually I actually think Paul Rudd would make a hilarious Baird. But I don't know how much he'd be willing to like. I guess he. I guess he got ripped for Ant Man. But you know, we could have we could have a stray movie, and Paxil will be the star. Hmm. <laughs> it's 
Speaking of cat movies, I hear that new Puss in Boots movie is better than it has any right to be. Yeah, yeah. my my roommate my roommate won't shut up about the movie. He try he begged me to watch it with him. What? I was like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, was like, I love cats, and I have no intention of ever seeing that. And I'm not going to tell my son about it, so he won't make me go see it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, well, uh, oh thank you God. very much for uh, tuning into the into the video game Boss Rush After Dark episode tonight. <laughs> well, oh. it was more like adaptations, you know. Yeah, 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 you're right. Entertainment and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. Always happy to switch things up, you know. Well, no, the, well, well, no, like that's that's the that's the beauty of this show. Like sometimes, you know, it's sometimes, you know, we, it's, a, it's a say anything show. So, you know, like, hey, like it's all relative. We're gaming nerds. So it came back around the video games. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. You're, hey, I didn't bring up video games. Hmm. My that's topic right. was about media that transports you back. And then you turned around and started talking about what? what? Fuck you. You, you, you. That that was you. That that was you. That was you. So so take your ball and go home, new kid. Oh. <laughs> I, he left the ball. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Corey. I love you, Corey. I'm the one that's I'm the one that's been verbally abusing you all night. I am so sorry, man. Like I. I, I know it's going to come back to me like tenfold. Like it's next all right. week. No, we'll, we'll, he, Leron will stop when you actually take care of yourself, Corey. That's fine. Yep. Yep. Speaking <laughs> of taking care of yourselves, you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off for tonight. <laughs> I think we, I think we owe it to ourselves, and we owe it to you also to, to it's not before like, midnight, listen. huh? It's I before know. midnight. Yeah, I know. Exciting, I know. right? Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, like, uh, like, yeah. Hopefully, you get the edits done fast and you go straight to bed. I'm not gonna edit tonight. I'm gonna edit. <gasps> well, who is this pod person? Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, I have a new goal. It's to be in bed before midnight every night, regardless. Because honestly, what two weeks ago, I was up till like four o'clock in the morning editing stuff, and I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. Help. New, new, yeah. new, new, new. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's been a couple of times I've been up late at night, like like doing edits and stuff like that, you know. So, and some, sometimes it's because I just can't go to sleep, and sometimes it's because I'm like, if I don't get it done now, like the shit's gonna be delayed for like three days. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm actually gonna like start editing on the weekend. Although, I know that after dark, I, we're like the show. This episode goes up on Sat this coming Saturday, so I'll have to edit the audio. But the video stuff, I'm just gonna edit on the weekends. Good. It's just it, you know, trying to trying to work on that work life balance thing everybody's talking about, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a struggle, but I'm getting there. That was a that was a big step for me to not stay up and edit stuff, you know. Sorry, I'm drawing out the the, the podcast. Help! Oh no no, no save no. me! You're, you're 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 good. You're good, man. We're happy to hear it. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and sign off for tonight. It's been it's been a pleasure. Um, as always, uh, check the show notes and uh, and see where you can get in contact with everybody at. Also, uh, be, uh, don't forget we have we have a Patreon. So you know, like this is how you get the episodes early if you if, if you care about that type of thing. And uh, you know, uh, it's 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 the Boss Rush Network. Uh, you know, be better, be kind, and we will see you next time. Y'all have a good night. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.